Happy Sabbath, everyone. We have made it to the end of another week, and we are here in the house of the Lord to worship today. We are about to go into our song service, but before we do so, let us pray. Dear Most Righteous and Eternal Father, I want to thank you for today. I want to thank you for allowing us to see another Sabbath day. Lord, as we're about to go into today's program, I pray that it may go according to your will and hearts will be blessed. Guide and protect us throughout the rest of the day. In your name I pray and say thanks. Amen. So our first hymn this morning is hymn number 384, Safely Through Another Week. Safely through another week, God has brought us on our way. Let us now a blessing seek, waiting in his courts today. Day of all the week, the best emblem of eternal rest. Day seek supplies of grace through the day redeemer's name show thy reconciling face take away the sin and shame from our worldly care set free may we rest this day in thee from our worldly care set free, may we rest this day in thee. When the morn shall bid us rise, may we feel thy presence near. May thy glory meet our eyes while we in thy house appear. joyful sound conquer sin as comfort saints may the fruits of grace abound bring relief to all complaints thus may all our sabbaths be till we rise to reign with thee thus may all our sabbaths be And our second hymn for this morning is hymn number 388, Don't Forget the Sabbath. Don't forget the Sabbath, the Lord our God hath blessed. Of all the week, the brightest, of all the week, the best. It brings repose from labor. It tells of joy divine. It beams of light descending with heavenly beauty shine. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath holy and worship Him today. Who said to His disciples, I am the living way. And if we meekly follow our Savior here below, He'll give us of the fountain who 
streams eternal flow. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. Day of sacred pleasure. Its golden hours will spend in thankful hymns to Jesus, the children's dearest friend. O oh, gentle, loving Savior, how good and kind thou art! How precious is thy promise to dwell in. Sabbath day. Welcome, welcome, ever welcome, blessed Sabbath day. And our final hymn for this morning is hymn number 382. That is hymn number 382, O Day of Rest and Gladness. Good morning, everyone, and happy Sabbath. It has been quite a while since some of us have been in school. We are from the Cornerstone class, and we would like to bring back some memories of what it may have been like for you back in the day. For some of you, it meant walking miles to school, barefooted, with little or no breakfast. For others, it meant getting out of bed extra early to tend to animals before rushing off to school to ensure you are not punished by your principal. 
I can only imagine the feeling you had, learning to read, doing math and civics, then playing marbles and cricket with a box drink ball stuffed with the remains of Kiska pot paper and government parties. It was nothing like our days that are hard, long hours. But we'll debate that another time. By the way, I'm the school's principal for today, Mr. Roger Miller, as appointed by the chairman of our board, Jesus Christ. I invite the congregation to stand with me and say the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily breath, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. And now, our first class for the day will be math. I invite Mr. Kyle Harriot, our teacher, to conduct this class. Good morning, Sabbath School. I'm Mr. Harriot, and I will be conducting the math class today. Firstly, I'm going to ask that you guys take out a pen and paper, because not only am I going to be testing your Bible study skills, I'm going to be testing your math skills. Nothing too hard, though. Is everybody ready? Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write down the age that Adam died. Does anybody know when he died? Or? Hmm? I don't know. 930, yep. He died at the ripe old age of 930. Then we're going to divide by the number of sons Adam's sons mentioned in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Yes? Two? That's correct. And that will give us... <laughs> 465, yep. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the number of years that the Israelites were enslaved by the Egyptians. 400, okay. 465 minus 400 is equal to 65. Now this is an easy one. We're going to multiply 65 by the number of days in the creation week. Seven. So 65 times seven. Seven times five is 35. Carry the three. Seven times six is 42. 42 plus three is 45. That will give us 445. Hmm? 455. Five. Okay, now the final thing we're going to do is we're going, we're going to add the year that Jesus was baptized. Does anybody know it? Twenty-seven, twenty-seven A.D. So twenty-seven plus four fifty-five, seven plus five, that's twelve. Carry the one. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1, 8, and 4, 82. So now, I would like everybody to stand, and 
as we sing the hymn 482, Lord lead me day by day. I now invite Miss Janique Gooden to lead out in our reading and comprehension class. You, you, you may be seated. <laughs> happy South, everyone. I need a better happy South. Happy South, everyone. <laughs> So welcome to Reading and Comprehensions class. So for today's activity, I would like you to take out your hymnals and turn to number. Okay, so I want you to take out your hymnals and turn to number 828 entitled Youth. And if you don't have your hymnals, you can turn to Proverbs 3 verse 5. Yeah, Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6. So that um, for the hymnal, you're going to turn to number 828, entitled Youth. And for the Bible, you're going to turn to Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. So I've invited some of my colleagues today to help me with the reading of the passage. At the end, I'll be asking some questions to see how well you have been listening. So are you ready? Okay, let's begin. Remember your creator in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come, and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Even, even a child is known by his actions, by, by, whether, by whether his conduct is pure or right. How can a young man keep his way pure? By living accordingly to your word. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. My son, do not forget my teachings, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your, your life many years and bring you prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the template of your heart then you will win favor and good name in the sight of God and man. So the congregation now will read the next paragraph. So let's go. Trust in the Lord. Everybody must know this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths right. Um, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. 
He satisfies my desire with good things so that my youth is renewed like an eagle's. Okay, so here are, the, here are the questions for the class. When are we to remember our Creator especially? Muy bien. How is a child known? Very good. How can all of us, especially young people, keep their way pure? Okay. According to the passage, how can we prolong our days? Amen. Yes. So, true or false, we only need to trust God in some things and invite him to participate in some of the things we do. Let me read again. We only need to trust God in some things and invite him into, to participate in some things we do. Amen. So, we must trust and invite him to be a part of everything we do. Thank you. You did very well. Thank you, Miss Gooden. And indeed, you did an excellent job. You all got an A+. I now invite Miss Kalib Hyman, the teacher in charge of our spelling class, to come forward. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, today we'll be using our favorite Bible promises to spell these four words. So, some of the letters have already been supplied, and now it is for you to fill in the rest. If you think you know a letter that will help to complete this phrase, then you must raise your hand, then recite a verse that you have memorized, beginning with that letter to complete the phrase. If you are taking too long to answer, then my colleague, Alden Yee Codling, will step in with an answer. Let me give you an example. The third letter in the last word is H. So I could say, H, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now you try. Does anyone want to try? Yes? Okay, good. Yes, L, okay. What? C is, C is already there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, good. It's T is already there, yes? Yes? Yes. Okay, good job, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath School. No. Indeed, we wish to welcome you to our Sabbath School. And what lovely passages of scripture we have stored away in our hearts. I believe that the chairman of our board, Jesus Christ, is very pleased with our progress today. Now it's time for our science class. 
Please come forward, Professor Jonathan Wright, and lead the class in this subject. Good morning, class. Did you ever think of prayer as being a science? In 1899, Ellen White wrote, Today we need men who understand that the science of prayer is to exercise faith and show works that will tell the glory of God and the good of his people. Prayer is the laboratory in which some experiment with the power of God. However, as God's children, we have a living experience. We cannot put God in a test tube, but through prayer, we can find evidence of his existence. Did you test God this week? Have you done an experiment in the lab of prayer recently? Mr. Ritson Elliott, our assistant science teacher did. Mr. Elliott, tell us about your experiment. What were the results? What conclusion did you reach? Happy Sabbath, church. Today, I will be speaking about prayer. The event I'm sharing with you is one that happened to me last year when I was in fifth form, and it had a very powerful impact on my life. As you may know, every fifth former has to take a regional exam called CSEC. And these exams can be very challenging. So I prayed continuously throughout my fifth form tenure, asking God to help me with these exams. Do you think he came through? When the results came out, I was very surprised. I went down the, my list of subjects, chemistry, one, biology, one, physics, one, until I realized that in total I had nine ones. Isn't that wonderful? The takeaway, thank you. The takeaway from this story is that no matter how, time, how hard the times may seem, pray without ceasing, for the Lord will carry you through. Amen. That was a wonderful testimony. Can we please stand for the opening prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another week that you've carried us through. Thank you for everything that you've done for us throughout this week. Now as we are here, please be with us, please guide and protect us, and please help that the program will flow and that we'll all get something from this program. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers, and please be with us throughout this Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen. I really like experiments, especially when it involves prayer. We will now move on into our next session, which is social studies. We learn about a girl called Carmen. Well, this is not her correct name, but it's being used to protect her identity and, and privacy as she builds a new life in God. This class will be conducted by Mr. Justin Edwards. Okay, happy Sabbath, everyone. For our social studies class, we will focus on Spain and the needs of the inter-European division. Please take out the, quarter, the maps in your quarterly, which may be found on page 107. So, on my little globe here, located right here but since the globe is small and if you want to see where it's located you can come after Sabbath school <laughs> arrested at the airport by Andrew Chuck McChesney two days before Carmen boarded the international flight she knelt before her bed and to ask for God's protection the young woman, barely out of her teens, had not prayed in years. She wasn't sure why she felt compelled to pray just then. But she was filled with despair and poured out her heart, whole heart into prayer. Sorry. God, please protect me and take care of me, Carmen prayed. Guide me because I'm doing this out of desperate need. 
Please do not allow the police to catch me. <laughs> that night, she had a dream. She dreamt that the police arrested her and placed her in handcuffs. When she woke up, she dismissed the dream as unimportant. A day later, she boarded the plane for a long flight from Brazil to Spain. Carmen trembled for the duration of the 12-hour flight. She was terrified. She remembered that she had tried to take the trip a month earlier, but things hadn't worked out. She remembered that her mother had told her many times, return to God while there is still time. She prayed nonstop for the 12 hours. Please give me peace, she prayed. Please give me protection, calm my heart. She asked God to guide her. Please fulfill your will in my life, she said. Upon landing in Spain's capital, Madrid, Carmen gave her passport to an immigration officer and passed through the passport control without any problems. When she collected her suitcase in the baggage claim area, a police stopped her. Follow us, a police officer said. Carmen followed the officers to a room where she was told that her suitcase had been inspected and found something illegal inside. Carmen was placed in handcuffs. You're under arrest, an officer said. Carmen remembered her dream and silently asked for God's forgiveness, but there was nothing else she could do. Police direct, took her directly from the police to a prison cell. The trial lasted for four months and Carmen was sentenced to six years in prison. She had no families in Spain and no friends. She knew no one. She asked herself, why are these things happening to me? Why am I here? It was a painful experience and many other inmates thought they were in prison because God was punishing them. It was hard to have hope. One day, a fellow inmate invited Carmen to a Bible study. Nice people from a church are visiting us, the inmate said. They are offering Bible studies. Come along. Carmen went to the Bible study and met Julia and Santosa, two Seventh-day Adventist women from a group of 10 who regularly visited the prison. It was her first meeting with Adventists. Carmen liked the Adventist woman. She felt welcome and accepted. She felt a sense of protection. As they read the Bible together, she began to feel, feel God's presence in her life. She particularly loved reading the Bible. Sorry, let me repeat that. She particularly loved reading. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalms 23, verse 1 to 4. Carmen felt like she was not alone. She began to have hope. After starting Bible studies, her life got better and better. She received a coveted job in prison, and before she knew it, she was released for good behavior. She had only served three years of the six year six year sentence. Now I'm free, Carmen says. My life has been restored. I am studying at a university and moving on with my life. I will always put my trust in God because God comes first in my life. Carmen regularly visits the prison to encourage an incarcerated friend. She tells her, you always have to hold on to God because everything is possible with him. God, sorry. Carmen thanks God that she went to prison. She says, God heard her frightened prayers on the 12 hour flight to Spain. While God didn't keep her out of prison, he answered her plea for him to fulfill her will in her life. He brought her into a close relationship with him. 
I feel very ashamed of my mistakes, but I want my story to serve as a lesson to others, she says. When you ask God for his will to be done in your life, wait patiently for him to answer because he will. Part of the 13th Sabbath offering three years ago went to San Sagonto, Seventh-day Adventist College in Spain, where students also give Bible studies to prisoners. Thank you for your mission offerings that helped spread hope. Thank you for your attention. Wow, what a story. Won't you agree with me, church? Truly God can take our ashes and restore his beauty in us. Our morning sure is moving along so quickly. Now it's time for our economics class with Mr. Alex Foster as our teacher. Uh, good morning, church. So we're going to, now we're going to talk about, a, little about, a little about economics, about investing money. So we hear, we hear a lot of, these days we hear a lot about inflation, we hear about depression, and the strength of the currency that we're using, and interest rates. Under these circumstances, you know, where's the best place to invest your money? Where do you get the best returns? Some say real estate is the way to go. Others are pushing blue chip stocks. Still, they say municipal bond issues are better buys. I am saying Sabbath school investment gives the best returns of all. Many are doubling or even tripling their money through the Sabbath school investment fund, as you can see here. Some of you look most confused. That's because not many schools are bothering with this funding program anymore. However, I guarantee you that it works. As brief historical reminder, Sabbath school investment has been around the Seventh-day Adventist Church for more than 100 years. Today, I invited a guest speaker from our central region of Sabbath school investment fund for Jamaica to speak to us about the experience of a few such investors and to see why we should put some more emphasis on this area of our Sabbath school. Please give Mr. Samuel Narayana your undivided attention at this time. Good morning, class. I'm delighted to be here this morning to share the success stories of many of the investors of this fund. The late Dr. Bernard Headley took a special interest in this program of the Sabbath School and encouraged the NCU church family to engage in the program. This part of his article reporting on this program in this church. $300,000 was needed to purchase our Dorado Pathfinders drum set. Or more Sabbath school members signed up joyfully designating proceeds from a range of individual projects, from sales of backyard produce to savings on doctor's bills and taxi fares, to see us realize our goal. In January 2015, we had, accum we had an accumulated total of 321,000 Jamaican dollars, and the Pathfinders were able to purchase their shiny new drum set, plus an array of other instruments. We surpassed our goal. You would have seen some of our Pathfinders playing but a few of the instruments at our induction service a couple of weeks ago. This from Investing with Heaven. How do I participate, you are wondering? A good starting point for generating an investment fund is to think of an idea, then make a plan. Ask yourself, what's one way, perhaps seemingly unlikely, I could expect a blessing over the next few months? Think hard about it, and then, after you decide, put God to the challenge, saying, God, surprise me. Here was Sister Lola, Christian's three-part investment plan for 2013. Sale of ripe bananas, actual value $1,500. Unexpected free rides between July and November, 
valued $50 per ride, actual savings $3,150, no visit to medical doctor for, for August and October, actual savings $2,000. $2, Total turned over to the church treasurer in November 2013 came to $6,650. One day, Sister Morvia Facey Gordon invested in her granddaughter doing well in university abroad. Other parents right here in our church committed to give amounts for the investments according to the number of A's and B's their children got in school. And you would have noted how God blessed them tremendously for their faith in him. Remember the late Hazel Barrow? Well, one 24th Sabbath, one May 24th Sabbath, when she celebrated her 84th birthday, in Thanksgiving, she turned over to the church treasurer as part of her investment, 84 US dollars. Here is the best part, experiencing all the blessings poured out on his children when God sees their absolute trust in him. Thank you, Mr. Nariana. Why not try it and see how your blessing will exceed your storage? In fact, why not begin an investment project toward the church building? That way we may all have a fulfilling experience worshiping in the sanctuary built of God's miracles and blessings. Amen, amen. Truly God can make amazing things happen when we give to him unreservedly. At this time, we'll be moving into our Bible class where we will be reviewing the lesson of the week. Ellen White in the book Education writes on page 251 to 252, as a means of intellectual training, the opportunities of the Sabbath are invaluable. Let the Sabbath school lesson be learned not by a hasty glance at the lesson scripture on Sabbath morning, but by careful study for the next week on Sabbath afternoon with daily review or illustration during the week. Thus, the lesson will become fixed in the memory and a treasure never to be wholly lost. Please go to your homerooms now and have your teachers mark, and mark the registers and lead you into your Bible class for this morning, which will be done by Pastor Robert Wright. Before you go to your homerooms, however, our guidance counselor, Ms. Aldene Codlin, will pray with us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly and Compassionate Father, we ask that you surround us with your wisdom and love. Send your spirit upon these students and fill them with your wisdom and blessing. Please grant that they devote themselves to their study and draw closer to you as you are the source of all our knowledge. We ask in your name I pray, amen. I actually didn't want to come up here, you know. I was enjoying the, <laughs> the Sabbath school so well. Oh boy, I wonder if I remember what I... <laughs> that was such a wonderful um, class. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Awesome. That is the integration of faith and learning, right? Um, some years ago, when uh, Dr. Neil Reed was the senior pastor for this church and I was the assistant pastor Dr. Dowse got up one morning in the chapel and he said we are such a fortunate and intelligent church we have serving us read and write <laughs> you know how witty Dr. Dowse used to be right okay so this morning um, by the way how much time do I have do I have the full half an hour? 20 minutes? You just read that we should not go through hastily the Sabbath school. <laughs> okay. Our lesson this morning is titled, or for the week, that's just passed, Fear God and Give Glory to Him. And uh, our memory text is Revelation 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. We just had the prayer, so we're just going to go straight into the lesson. Now, 
we need to keep the context of Revelation 14 in mind. The context of Revelation 14 is Revelation 13, the end time challenge that the church will be facing concerning the mark of the beast, the, um, the challenge with buying and selling, the worship of the beast and, uh, and uh, the dragon. And in that context, God is sending a warning to the entire world. Whereas the powers that be are calling for all to worship the dragon and to receive his mark and ultimately would suffer his, uh, God's wrath, the angels are saying, or God is saying, worship me. Worship the God who is worthy of worship because he is what? He is the creator. He is the only one who is deserving of worship. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. They tell me I have 20 minutes, so let me just go straight to um, Sunday. What does it mean to fear God? Anybody? What does it mean to fear God? To honor him, to reverence him, to respect him, surrender to him. We're talking about reverential fear. And um, that's the message of the first angel. Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. What does the judgment have to do with this particular um, 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 message? Fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. What's the connection? Anybody? What's the connection between the judgment message and fearing God? It shows loyalty. Anybody else? To remind us of the consequences of not fearing him. Okay. Anybody else? Let's do this quickly. <laughs> okay, I'm hearing you. Um, by the way, do we have time for a roving mic to... Somebody, could you come and take a mic for me, please? Anybody? We need... Uh... A fleet-footed young person, Ritzan. Okay. The judgment, there's Sister Hay over there, Ritzan. Which judgment is this talking about anyway? Pre-advent judgment. What happens in the pre-advent judgment? What happens in the pre-advent judgment? I see Sister Hay and then Pastor Walker. Quickly. You see, a part, good morning everyone. A part of fearing God includes doing work for him. Mm -hmm. And we are reminded in scriptures that God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or or evil so many times we believe that listen we can just get up and do our work any and anyhow anywhere and do it with self but the work that is to be done must be a work according to god's divine spirit and when we are led by his spirit we have jesus as our representative so there's no need to be fearful of the judgment amen amen, amen. okay um Ella Walker over there. Yes, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. So the question you ask, how is fear in God connected to the judgment? Yes. Uh, I'm looking at Revelation 14, verse 7. I'm seeing uh, something like a chiasm here, a A, a B, and a A prime. So the A would be fear God and give him glory. The B would be because the half of his judgment is come. And the A prime would be worship him who made the heaven, the earth, and so forth. So fearing God and giving him glory is connected to worshiping the creator. And the central focus of the verse is because the how of his judgment is come. There is like a clue as it relates to how to go through this judgment and come out vindicated. 
and the elements above fear God, give him glory, and the elements below worship him who made would be the experience of those who will be vindicated in the judgment. Okay. And uh, thank you so much, Pastor. And we notice in Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for what? This is the whole duty of man. And it goes on to say in the next verse, For God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So we see here that fearing God will be to our benefit in the judgment. Are you following? Yes. And because, we come back to the context of the time, the world is teaching a different message about judgment. Isn't that true? The world is saying that judgment will take place when Jesus comes again. But the scripture is saying the judgment takes, pl takes place before Jesus comes. Are you following? The world is also saying, the Christian world, that the saints do not enter into judgment. Do you know that? Could somebody find John 5, 24 for me? Quickly. Pastor, you have it there? John 5, 24. Thank you. Thank you so much. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I am here reflecting on Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And I'm reflecting, is it possible, is there any possibility for me as a follower of Christ to have reverential awe and still I'm not keeping God's commandments? <laughs> Did you hear that? Is it possible for me to have reverential awe and still... Well, it depends on the level of knowledge. Because there are persons who do not, well, if you're talking about the commandments, all of them, um, all Christians know that uh, they are to obey God's commandments. But the challenge is with the fourth one. That's, that's always the problem. And they will talk to you about the importance of, you know, keeping God's commandments, et cetera, et cetera. Some will say, well, the commandments are not necessary anymore. We're living by grace and we, we, we're not under the law and all kinds of stuff. But there are sincere persons who are worshiping God but are deluded misled who don't have the true understanding of what the scripture says and God is leading those individuals to come to a, a clearer understanding but for persons to knowingly disregard God's commandment and to con to try to convince themselves that they are still honoring God that doesn't happen it cannot work it doesn't happen okay but in their ignorance God is still leading them um, wh what was I saying earlier on yeah, John 5, 24. Sister Hay, who has it? Ritson, I want you to work with me quickly, please. Time is going. John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. That is the King James Version. Does somebody have another version? Okay, please read, Sister. Thank you. So the ESV reads, it says, Truly, truly, I say unto you, whoever hears my word and believes him, he sent me uh, has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, mm. but has passed from death to life. Okay. Notice the difference in, in the word here. One says he does not come into condemnation. Mm -hmm. The other says the one who believes in me does not come into judgment. Which is the better rendition? Which is the better translation? The word for judgment is crisis, from which we get crisis. It is translated condemnation or judgment. For those who are in Christ, are they condemned? No. Romans 8 verse 1. They are not condemned. But does the child of God pass through the judgment? Yes. Yes. So the better, more accurate translation is the King James Version. Mm -hmm. 
The one who comes to accept Jesus Christ has passed from death into life and he does not come into condemnation. Mm -hmm. But we do go through the judgment, don't we? Yes. Because God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, according to Paul's theology. All right, so let's run on. Fearing God and obeying him. Fearing and obeying God. So we look at uh, Deuteronomy 6, verse 2. That you may fear the Lord your God to keep all his commandments, his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, you and your sons and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. So fearing God, keeping his commandments, they go together. Your hands, Psalm 119.73, your hands have made me and fashioned me, Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. And verse 74 says, Those who fear you will be glad when, you, when they see me because I have hoped in your word. So notice these passages couple the fear of God with obedience to God. Isn't that true? Yes. Hence, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the seas, and the fountains of water. Uh, Pastor Walker. Yes, the, the lesson says, sorry, on Monday, fearing God is an attitude of reverential respect that leads us to obedience. So when we truly fear God, we will respect him, and therefore we will be obedient to him. Now, as it relates to the measure of obedience, it will be based on the knowledge of God's will. So a person, whether the person is a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church or a member of another church or a member of any organization, if that person truly fears uh, God, then that person will be obedient to God according to the light that God has revealed. Amen. And that is very important for us to remember. In addition to that, that I have mentioned, when it comes to judgment, we notice that the, the Bible indicates two things, salvation for the saints and condemnation for the wicked. And in fact, the, the psalmist and others mentioned this as it relates to those who were to be judges in Israel. They were, they were to be fair, they were to be impartial, uh, and they were to vindicate the righteous and condemn the wicked. Uh, also, the, the judges that God uh, would raise up in, in judging, the book of Judges, these judges brought deliverance to the people of God. And so Jesus, who is the ultimate judge, he is the one who will bring deliverance to the saints. So judgment becomes good news for those who are worshiping him. Yes. Uh, we are fearful only when we are coming under guilt. Mm -hmm. But Jesus wants to remove our guilt so that we can experience a, a love relationship with him instead of becoming afraid of him. So in our relationship with Jesus, we will be able to pass the judgment. That is, we will be able to be vindicated. And at the close of it, uh, all the saints will be well. Those who reject Jesus, they won't be well. And uh, it, the appeal is for us to really fear God. Amen. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We need to run on quickly. Um, I see here under uh, Monday's lesson, uh, uh, some persons, you know, um, talk about uh, we don't need the law. We, we are under grace. And uh, grace does not free us from obeying the commands of God. I say, without law, there is no grace. True or false? Hello? Without law, grace does not exist. True or false? You're not so sure? Without grace, without law, there is no grace. Grace presupposes that we have broken the law and we are condemned to be punished. Is that true? But instead of being punished, we are pardoned. Is that true? That's right. So you're driving down the road, you break the speed limit, the police stops you, and he says, I'm going to give you a ticket. Sir, 
please understand, I'm in a hurry. I'm going to visit my sick grandmother before she dies. Police has sympathy, and he says, all right, tell you what, I'm going to let you off this time, but please stay within the speed limit. True? You get grace, isn't that true? But you press the gas again, and the, the speed limit, you, you have broken the speed limit again, and you're down, I need to get to my grandmother. Another police stops you down the road, and he says to you, brother, you're going at 130 in a 110 zone. And he says, well, a police just stopped me down the road, and he gave me grace. So um, I, don't have to, I don't have to regard the law anymore. Silly, doesn't it? Isn't it? The police says, listen, the policeman down the road gave you grace. Do you understand? But that grace is not permission for you to continue to break the law. The law still exists. Grace does not break or abolish the law. So I'm going to give you a ticket. And he gives him a ticket. The same thing with God's uh, law. Once God pardons us, that is not liberty to continue in transgression. Are you following? Grace enables us to keep the law, to obey God's precepts. It is not liberty to transgress. So those who say we're not under the law anymore, we don't need the law, they misunderstand what that term means. To be under law means to be under condemnation. That's what it means, okay? All right, we're still obligated to keep the law. Now, we're, we're, we're almost done, because we're running out of time. Living a God-centered life. Um, Matthew 6, you all know what that says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. So the central issue in earth's final conflict is a battle for the mind. Do you agree? Yes. It is really one of allegiance, authority, and commitment to God's will. The final battle in the great controversy is between good and evil to control our thoughts. How is the devil trying to control our thoughts, our minds? Young people, how is the enemy trying to control our mind? What are some of the strategies? The gadgets? What else? Let's talk. You all know. How is the enemy trying to control our mind? Entertainment. Pleasures. Games. Sports. Social media. What we read. Television movies. Stuff that we look at. Yes? Music. The devil is doing everything possible to control our mind. And Jesus is wanting to get our attention as well. Because the one who controls the mind controls the person. Is that true? Yes. And so, the scripture tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What was that mind like? The mind of Christ. Pure? Did you say? Having the fruit of the Spirit? Guarded? Guarded, yes. Did I hear somebody else? Purity. Okay, what about submission to God? Fearing God. The, 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 the uh, last verse of the third angel's message, Revelation 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and what? The faith, have the faith of Jesus Christ. No, our salvation from beginning to end depends on what Jesus Christ does for us and in us. True or false? Hello? If you look at Paul's theology, is it faith in Christ that is of the essence or the faith of Christ? Of Christ. Talk to me, please. Of Christ. Is it the faith of Christ or faith in Christ that he's talking about? Are they the same? They're certainly not the same, right? So when you check it out, it is the righteousness of Jesus that qualifies us. Is that true? It is the faith of Jesus. It is the obedience of Christ. 
Everything is about what Jesus does in us and through us. That's our salvation. We cannot do it on our own. We cannot do it without him. In the last crisis, those who will stand in the last days will be those who have the mind of Christ, the faith of Christ, the righteousness of Christ. Everything will be about Jesus Christ. And we are almost done. One last point. Question here. Paul reminds us that we should glorify God in our body, which is God. How do we glorify God with the body temple? One. And two, can I be saved if I willfully destroy the body temple? I will leave the last answer for God to decide. But how do we honor God in our bodies? If this is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which the scripture says, then everything that we do must be for the maintenance of the purity of this temple. True? What we eat, what we drink, the entertainment we engage in, the purity of our lives, sexual purity and otherwise, our thoughts, everything. We must be so submitted to Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit can dwell within our hearts. The Holy, notice what the Holy, what, uh, what, how the Bible describes the third member of the Godhead. Holy Spirit. And everything that is connected with the Holy Spirit is holy. Is that true? The holy priesthood, the holy priest, the holy sacrifices, the holy Sabbath, everything about God is holy. We are a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy and a peculiar people. We must show forth the what? The praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that is how we will honor God and glorify him in these last days when all the world is going after the dragon and worshiping the beast and taking his mark. God will have a people who will stand unspotted, um, uh, faithful and committed to the cause of God, to the, to the commandments of God, having the righteousness of Jesus Christ in these last days. God bless you. Amen, amen. We have come to the end of our school day. We continue to rejoice together in these precious moments. Our music teacher, Mr. Joel Wright, will lead us in our hymn of dismissal. And then our dean of discipline, Mr. Raheen Elliott, will do the closing exercise with us. Good morning, everyone. Please turn to hymn number 311, I Would Be Like Jesus. Please stand at the appropriate time. Yeah.
Happy Sabbath, church. Please remain standing. Hands up. Hands clasp. Eyes closed. School is over for today. We have enjoyed our study and our praise. Before we go, we'd like to say, thank you, Lord, for a lovely day. Amen. You may be seated. Students, please ensure you have all your belongings as you stay for after school activities. Your best behavior is expected. Please remember that we must abide by our school's motto be reverent in God's sanctuary. You might not have seen him, but the chairman of the board, Jesus Christ, was and will remain with us for our remaining school activities. Have a blessed rest of the Sabbath, everyone.
about that verse is that even if you can't sing you can make a joyful noise unto who the lord. all ye lands he tells us to also serve the lord with gladness so i want to see the smiles when we're singing unto the lord as the nation of jamaica right so we as jamaicans today will be singing unto the lord making a joyful noise and the reason why we make a joyful noise is because it should be our desire to follow and to worship the Lord. This is my desire to honor you. Oh, 
invite you to stand as we do our call to worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comforts, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we receive ourselves, with the comfort, I'm sorry, with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 from the New King James Version. The church is now called to worship. Father, we your children have come into your presence to worship. We have come to honor you. We have come to glorify your holy name. As we worship today and as we listen to the various musical items, may our hearts be blessed and may we leave here more determined, more prepared to make it into your kingdom when you shall come. Grant us all a special blessing, I pray. And we say thanks for all your wonderful goodness. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, everyone. The privilege is mine to welcome you to this special day. Not only is it the Sabbath, today is Music Day. I am pleased to see so many beautiful faces this morning, and I believe that God is even more pleased that each and every one of us have decided to come and worship Him today. Let us reflect on this day and give thanks to the Lord our God with the text from Psalm 100 verses 4 and 5. 
enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Have a blessed Sabbath. We'll now have the welcome song. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Come on, move around, shake a person's hand and say amen. For when the Spirit Happy Sabbath, everybody. Have God been good to you throughout the week? Happy Sabbath, everybody. How many of us here today believe that because God lived, that we're, we're able to be here right now? How many, how many of us believe that right now? God sent His Son. They call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died.
Thank you so much, Tris Mar. And it's quite evident and obvious that our lives, our lives, my life, is worth the living just because our God lives. I join with young Sister Burton to welcome you to the Seventh-day Adventist Church at Northern Caribbean University. And I notice a number of faces that are a little strange, or should I say, have not seen for a little while. We welcome you. David, it's good to have you. It's good to have you in the house, David. It's a joy. You look like a young deacon. Make sure you work on it. Amen? It's good to have you in the house. It's good to have Dr. and Sister Owen Roberts. It's always a pleasure having you worshiping. We have Marcel Hamilton from Sinai Church in New York. We have Marcy and Dwight Hamilton. Uh, we have the Terry and, Terry and Hudson. We have Ashley Parchment. We have Erika and Christina Ferron from Waltham, also Dexter Pusey. We have Danita Green. We have the Sister Kim and family. We have Brother James and family. That's Sister Hazel Burrows' family. It's just a wonderful privilege. We have Brother Dean all the way over there. Brother Dean Miller and his family. They are originally from Bath in Westmoreland. It's good to have you worshiping. And if I've missed out your name, please forgive me. It's just good to have all of you in the house of God worshiping today. And it's no wonder the song says, when God's people get together, even in the stormy weather, we can praise the name of the Lord. It's the purpose for which we are here today. And let us open our hearts for the working and the leading of the Holy Spirit so that as we praise, our prayers will go up to Almighty God as sweet incense. And in return, we will receive the blessings that he has in store for us. There are some notices that I want to quickly share with you. The first has to do with a public notice. Notice has this day been received by me of marriage as intended to be solemnized between the following persons. Kawain Alcardo Steve Steer and Juveline Sergile. The condition for both, Kawain is a bachelor, Juveline is a spinster, Kawain, call, Kawain's calling, university student, Juveline, social worker. And both of them are residing here in the parish of Manchester. Kawain, please indicate so that the folks see who you are at your standing tall. I haven't seen Sister Juveline. She's there. Sister Juveline, could you stand so that they see that you are in red? All objections of a certificate of due publication of bans granted authorizing the celebration of this marriage must be lodged with me in writing within seven clear days. And the law of the land stipulates that that writing that you will do must be accompanied with 1,500 Jamaican dollars. From the day, from this day by the objector who must appear personally to declare to the truth thereof. So this notice will be read again, and you can feel free to talk with me if you have information that you would like to share. And we wish both of you God's richest blessings as you take this very important stand. Reminding you that we still have a few seats available for those who will join us on the trip from NCU to Old Arbor, where we will have the burial of our church mother, our Aunt Azel Burrow. Our Thanksgiving service will take place tomorrow morning at 10 in the main auditorium. The viewing of her body will take place from 9 until 10, and then we will have the Thanksgiving service from 10 on to 12 
and then we will journey to Old Arbor where we will have the interment. So we still have a few seats available for those who desire to join the trip to travel from NCU to Old Arbor at the place of interment. There is a reasonable cost that is attached to the seat, so you can feel free to make contacts with me, or you can do so in making contacts since we are down to the wire. To Brother James, Brother James is seated over here. Our son, Brother James, is right here. We will also have the Thanksgiving service, so we have a number of Thanksgiving services. We have Sonia Smith, worker in the, a former worker in the Behavioral Sciences Department. She fell asleep, and her Thanksgiving service will take place here in this gymnatorium on the 28th of this month at 11 a.m. So we want you to give your support as you pray with and for the family. Then on the 30th, on the 30th of this month, we will have the Thanksgiving service for the late Ronald Clark, who has served us well here as a member. This Thanksgiving service will take place at the NCU Church Complex, starting at 10 a.m., that's April 30 at 10 a.m. by the NCU Church Complex, and the interment will take place at Albion. That's um, not Lower Albion, but Upper Albion. So remember these families in your prayers and even those who are not doing well at this time. We continue to build up God's temple and we thank you for that which you have contributed thus far so that we have 10,000 square feet of comfortable space where we worship. And just to let you know that next week, Sabbath, that's where we will go back to worship. We have 10,000 feet of comfortable space that we worship in. And before this year ends, we are going to commence the construction of the School of Religion and Theology. And Brother Byron, you're on your way out, but your cash will be on its way in. So that your son, your son, your nephew, your daughter, yes, can come and enjoy modern facility as we train workers for God's church. So at this time, we are going to prepare to give a special offering as we build up the temple, as we build up the temple of the Lord. The children will be coming. They will be assisting as we do that collection. It will take place. So we build up the temple of the Lord. While we await that, while we await that, it's, yes, while we await the building up the temple for this afternoon, we will continue with our interactive Bible class, which will commence at 3.30, and for this afternoon, we will not be having an AY program, only if Brother Oren and his team have decided that they are going to enrich us with some sweet soul story and songs of salvation. Don't worry, when you're through, I have crackers in the car. And we have carried a lot of lunch for potluck, amen? We have carried a lot of lunch for potluck, so those of you who would like to join us after divine service for potluck, feel free to do so. Feel free to do so as we work in this endeavor, we believe as a church that we do not only worship together, but we fellowship together. And one of the things that enriches fellowship is food. So feel free to join us for potluck this afternoon. Are we ready for building up the temple? Building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Oh, oh, building up the temple, building up the temple, building up the temple of the Lord. Oh, we are building up an holy temple for the Lord our God. 
Coursera Park is gonna be a house of praises Filled with Jesus in our hearts Oh, brother want to help us, sister want to help us Building up the temple of the Lord Oh, oh brother want to help us, sister want to help us Building up the temple of the Lord For your gifts even as we ask one of our children just to join us upon the upper the platform area so that we too can make our contributions to build up the temple of the Lord while they are coming while they are coming you cannot you cannot leave here without understanding that during the third quarter of 2023 we will be having a mega campaign, a mega evangelistic outreach. The Maranatha district is ready. The Napatrick district is ready. The Mandeva district is ready. The NCU district is ready. The Royal Flat district is ready. The, the Mike Town district is ready. Christiana district is ready. NCU, are you ready? Yes, you are ready. You know, you know, we believe, we believe as we even share this good news of salvation that our mantra and our mandate is to owe no man nothing but love. So we are asking. There are some love letters that have been distributed and others that are available. We are asking in your own quiet time as you receive that love letter or you prepare to receive it, you talk to God about what you're going to give towards this campaign as a family so that when we come to the beginning during the first part of the month of August, we will have all the funds available already. Amen? We will have all the funds available already for this worthwhile endeavor. And shall I share with you a secret? All the districts mentioned, I have met with the pastors and they have accepted the recommendation that I shared with them that every dollar that we receive in excess for the campaign. So when the campaign is finished, every dollar that remains, we will be using it towards the complex. Amen. So we want you to give and give and give again. And if you need some of those letters to take with you near and far, we can make them available as you solicit on our behalf. Finally, on the 6th, the 6th of May, May 6th, we have a number of members from the diaconate, that's deacon and deaconesses, that have been trained, and they will be set aside through ordination on May 6th at 4 p.m. at the church complex. I pray that God's presence will continue to permeate your heart, my heart. Spend these sacred hours reflecting on him, knowing that he's still the best friend to have, the one who hears us when we call, the one who helps us when we fall. God bless you and stay sweet in Jesus.
little children, all the children of the world, whether they are black or white. Yeah, keep singing. Hi there. All right. All the little kids, come on to the front. All the children of the world, whether they are black or white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Okay. All right. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Hi there, everybody. I'm Gio. Hi. And can everybody just tell me your names? Three, two, one. Jazze, I'm hearing Maya. Raquel. Hi, Raquel. Okay, so do you guys like stories? Okay, not really? You guys don't like stories? Okay, I'm sorry. It's okay, you can go back to your seats. Take care. No. <laughs> All right, so I have a little story for you today. And it's called Mean Jean the Recess Queen. Mean Jean the Recess Queen. That rhymes? So could you say it back for me? What's the title of today's story? Mean Jean the Recess Queen. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you all about it. I hope you don't mind if I sit. So, Mean Jean was recess queen and nobody said anything different. Nobody swung until Mean Jean swung. Nobody kicked till Mean Jean kicked and nobody bounced till Mean Jean bounced. If kids ever crossed her, she'd push them, smush them, lulapalush them, hammer them, Jammer him, kits him, jammer him. Say what? Mean Jean howled. Say who? Mean Jean growled. Say you. Just do who do you think you're talking to? Mean Jean always got her way. Until one day, a new kid came to school. Katie Sue. A teeny kid. A tiny kid. Probably just as little as you. A kid you might scare with a jump or a boo. You guys not scared by a boo, huh? Okay, okay, you guys have Jesus on your side. But when recess bell went ringity ring, this kid rang zingity zing for the playground gate. Katie Sue swung before Mean Jean swung. Could you believe that? Katie Sue kicked before Mean Jean kicked. And Katie Sue bounced before Mean Jean bounced. I'm going to tell you. The kid you might scare with a jump or a boo was too new to know about what Mean Jean the recess queen could do. When Mean Jean bullied through the playground crowd, Say you, she snarled, and grabbed Katie Sue by the collar. I won't grab it by the collar. Nobody swings until Mean Jean swings. Nobody kicks until Mean Jean kicks. And nobody bounces until Mean Jean bounces. And she figured she would have set the record straight. But she figured wrong. Because Katie Sue talked back. Just as sassy as could be, she said, how did you get so bossy? Then that puny little loony thing grabbed the ball and bounced away. Oh, Katie Sue was one quick kid. She bolted quick as lightning. Bouncity, bouncity, bounce. Kickity, kickity, kick. Swingity, swingity, swing. <laughs> Mean Jean thundered close behind. Bouncity, kickity, swingity. The recess queen was not amused. 
she raced and chased. And in your face, that little Katie Sue, no one spoke. No one moved. No one breathed. Then from her pack, Katie Sue pulled a jump rope clean and bright. Hey, Jeannie Beanie, sang Katie Sue. Let's try this jump rope out. Here's one thing true. Until that day, no one dared ask me and Jean to play. But that Katie Sue, she just hopped and jumped and skipped away. I like ice cream, I like tea. I want Jean to jump with me. Jean just gasped and scared as if too scared to move at all. So Katie Sue sang once more. I like popcorn, I like tea. I want Jean to jump with me. <laughs> then from the side, a kid called out, Go, Jean, go! And too surprised to even shout, Jean jumped in with Katie Sue. I like cookies. I like tea. I want you to jump with me. The rope whizzed and slapped faster and faster. The rope spun and flapped faster and faster till it caught in a big tangled disaster. But they giggled and jumped again. <laughs> well, now when recess rolls around, that playground's one great place. At the school bells, ringity ring, those girls run, zingity zing, out the classroom door. Jean doesn't push kids, smush kids, lullapalush kids, hammerum, jammerum, kits and kajammerum. Because she's having too much fun, rompity romping, playing with her friends. So that's the story of me and Jane, the recess queen. Pardon? It's a rhyming story. Yeah, it's a rhyming story. I didn't write it, but I. Do you, do you guys do you guys like rhyming stories? I like rhyming stories too. So. Everybody was afraid of Mean Jean, the recess queen, right? Yeah? Do you, does, does anybody have a Mean Jean, the recess queen at their school? You have a Mean, are you Mean Jean, the recess queen? <laughs> okay, I'm just troubling you. What? No. Do you? Hi, man. How are you? What's your name? Ethan. What's your name? Ethan. Ethan. Hi, Ethan. I'm Gio. You like Pokemon? That's nice. Yeah. Oh, and he wants to take your Pokemon cards from you. That's not nice. So, I want to ask you, what was the difference with Katie Sue? Katie Sue? Nice and kind. Katie Sue was nice and kind. Yeah? Go ahead. And, he did, and he did nothing bad to anyone else. Hmm. It's a she. Katie Sue is a girl. But she did nothing bad to anyone else. That's so great. Ethan, go ahead. Um, he did not do anything evil. She didn't do anything evil. No. No, she did not. She was nice even though mean gene was mean mm. <laughs> is their name supposed to be that so what does that have to do with us as little christian boys and girls being the light of our schools could anybody tell me how you could Represent Jesus by being like Katie hey, Sue. Nice to somebody. Oh, yes, 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 by being nice to somebody. Go ahead. To teach the bully about Jesus. 
to teach the bully about Jesus. Okay, you guys are real smart. And, and to be, and to share your snack. And to share your snack. Yeah, I used to appreciate snacks. I still like snacks. And be nice to someone who has not been nice to you. Wow, that's so big. What's your name? Aria. Aria? And she's your sister? Oh, that's nice. You know how many big people don't get that lesson that you just said just a while ago? Share toys to Apple. Go again for me. Share toys to Apple. Share toys to others. Is that what you said? Yes. Okay, share your toys. And the last one from you right here, my friend. Spread the word. To spread the world. Now, aren't these kids just brilliant? Yeah. Can we have a round of applause for just our brilliant kids this morning? Thank you guys for listening to me and Jean, the recess queen. And I hope that each and every one of you, when you go back to school, you won't be like me and Jean, but you're going to be little Katie Seuss. Okay, so, pardon? No one's mean at my school. Oh yeah? You go to West Indies College? No, Arden Prep. Oh, okay. I was trying to put a plug in there, but <laughs> that's so good. Nobody's mean at your school. Okay, tell everybody hi for me. So, he said not in her class. Okay, probably. I, I won't get into that. I'll talk to you about that later. So, does anybody want to volunteer to pray? No? To pray. Wow. Okay, I haven't heard anything from you, Mr. Pink Shirt. Mr. Dapper Pink Shirt. Come on, go ahead. All right, everybody. Let's clasp our hands. Close our eyes. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for keeping us safe through the day. And help us to be good boys and girls. And to not, and to not be disrespectful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye, my little friends. Jesus loves the little children. Oh. Okay, what's your name? Nazim. Wow. All right, Nazim. Precious in his sight. Children of the world. The hymn of praise is Praise Him, Praise Him, Hymn 249. Deep and 
taking from John 8 verse 12 John 8 verse 12 and I will read in your hearing then Jesus spoke to them again saying I am the light of the world he who follows me shall not walk in darkness but have the light of the world this is the ending of the scripture you to pray with me in an attitude of prayer let us pray almighty God and our Heavenly Father we come to you today with thankful hearts with praises on our lips because you have been good to us. We thank you that safely through another week you have brought us on our way. You've taken us to this, your holy temple, to give you thanks and to magnify your name. We praise you, Heavenly Lord, for the fact that we're still alive because we're well aware of the world we live in at this time we are grateful Heavenly Father that we are in good health as much as we know and we thank you for the health and strength that you have allowed us to have and as you have given us this day Heavenly Father another Holy Sabbath we should ask ourselves what it is that you would want us to do that you have spared our lives. And Lord, as we contemplate this theme of being the light of the world, we pray that you will, through your Holy Spirit, be with each worshiper, 
Empower us, Holy Father, to be that true witness for you, that light to a world of darkness, because we well know that your coming is soon and even at the door. We praise you, Father, for our young people and the students of this university. And we pray, Heavenly Lord, that you will bless them abundantly and that you'll help them to grow in your wisdom and knowledge and that they will understand that their time is now and their time, their Lord, is to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Lord, we place in your care the board of this church, the leadership of this church, the building of the temple, the garnering of funds to ensure that your house will be built and built, dear Lord, your name's honor and glory. We place now before you our shut-ins, those who would have served you in the past and whose shoulders on which we now stand. We place before you, Brother Erdley Barnaby, Pastor Noel Fraser, Sister Hazel Spencer, Celestine Thomas, Carlos Campos, John Hines, Rennie Wright, Brother Jocelyn Sewell, and Sister Mabel Hunter. We ask, dear Father, that you will take care of them and bless them in every way possible at this time. We place before you the message and the messengers because we celebrate music day today and we will celebrate you in songs and praises. And so we ask that you will bless our singers today. And as they sing, dear Lord, glory and honor will go up to your name and praises be done throughout this temple. And then, Father, we place our nation before you. We live in this nation of crime and violence and abuse of our children and women. We live in this nation where robbery has increased, dear Lord. And so we place our police force, our army, and our nation, every single person who has the responsibility to ensure that we are safe. Lord, we cannot isolate from our country. Our churches operate throughout this island from St. Thomas, dear Lord, to Negril Point. And so we place each member before you, each member of Jamaica Union Conference, each member in the Inter-America Division, and our world church, as we Come, dear Lord, to this time, the last days of Earth's history. Bless each member and strengthen their faith. And may the Lord we be a prepared people to meet you when you come. This is our prayer and our asking in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. We manage time for Christ and balance time for daily endeavors. Matthew 22, verse 37. Show us, your, show us how to prioritize our time. 
love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Then love your neighbor as yourself. Time with Jesus comes first. Our devotional life and personal commitment is essential to learning to love God and one another. Before we can have financial peace, we must first have personal peace. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. The practical part of time is management, organizing time for family, your own life, and plans for the future. If Jesus is calling you to serve, whether at home or far away, Tell him that you will go and make the time to do just that. Share his love with others. Remember, you can serve God's mission and the world through your time, tithes, and regular systematic offerings that support every facet of God's work around the world. As the deacon and deaconesses stand in their place to receive our tithes and offerings, I ask you to join me in bowing your heads and closing your eyes as we offer a word of prayer. Heavenly Fathers, we have come to this point where we all can share, where we all can give, return a tithe and give a free will offering to your cause and your purpose. Bless those who have to give and those who do not have yet sufficient to give, bless, so that next time they'll be able to give. This we humbly pray, giving you thanks for the manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Amen. The deacons and deaconesses will now wait upon our tithe and offering. And for those who are tuning online, do feel free to participate as shown on the screen, various accounts through which you can give. the time, bring me all the times.
Today we focus on the theme Jesus the light of the world. We will be exploring different ways in which Jesus has been a light to our forefathers. And so we can be comforted by the fact that our God never fails. He was and is and, and forevermore, forevermore will be. Here is a story that we all may know. It's about Elijah's depression. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me. Be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. And when he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went on a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up! and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, and what did he do again? He ate, and he drank. You down, and you feel more broken than whole. When the wounds go deeper than words. And you can tell the soul I may not know what you're going through May not can make the high mountain move But one thing I've found That I really want you to know If it matters to you He wants to share the burdens you bear Whisper peace when your world gets shattered If it's your greatest joy or your deepest pain Or you're really needing an answer If it matters to you It matters to you Friend, do you think 
the maker and giver of life is far too busy to care about your trouble and strife. He sees a sparrow that falls to the ground. He hears a tear that don't make a sound. If you only knew how precious you are in His sight. If it matters to you, it matters to the Master. He wants to share the burdens you bear. Whisper peace when your world gets shattered. If it's your greatest joy, or your deepest pain, or you're really needing an answer. If it matters to you, it matters to the Master. If it's your greatest joy, or your deepest pain, or you're really needing an answer. If it matters to you, doesn't only matter to you. If it matters to you, it matters to the Master. It matters to the Master. story of the alabaster box. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him supper with Martha, whom served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This, he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief, and had the bag, and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying, hath she kept this. For the poor always ye have with you, but me ye have not always. Much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that he was there and they came not for jesus not for Jesus' sake rather but that they might see lazarus also whom he had raised from the dead She made her way to Jesus. She stumbles through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, There's no place here for kind. Still on she came through the shame that flushed her face and 
Till at last she knelt before his feet And though she spoke no words Everything she said was heard As she poured her love for the master From her box of alabaster I've come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster palm. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. weren't there the night he found me you did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his love all around me and you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster I can't forget the way life used to be I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound And I've spent my days I poured my life without measure Into a little treasure box I thought I found And healed my soul with the wonder of his touch. So now I'm giving back to him all oh, the praise he's worthy of. I've been forgiven, and that's why I love him so much. I Like oil from Mary's alabaster box. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. My hair, you. went along in the city greeting and interacting with people he saw a man who was blind from birth and his disciples asked him rabbi who sinned this man or his parents Jesus answered and said neither this man nor his parents sinned but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. For night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, 
and put it on the eyes of this man. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked him, Aren't you the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. How then were your eyes opened? They asked. And he replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and I washed. And then I could see. of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a blast with the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. 
Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, everyone straight in. So Joshua, son of Nun, called the priest and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and give seven priests carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the Ark of the Covenant. When Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets, and the Ark of the Lord's Covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard followed the Ark. All this time the trumpets were sounding, but a war cry, do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. So he had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to the camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. They went forward, marching before the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead of them and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord. While the trumpets kept sounding, so the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times the same manner, except that day they circled the city seven times. They sounded the trumpet's blast. Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. The battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle, the battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, 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 Joshua the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. The battle of Jericho, Joshua fit the battle. The battle of Jericho, Joshua. The battle of Jericho, 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 Joshua. The battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. The battle of Jericho, Joshua. The battle, the battle of Jericho. Talk about the kings of Gideon. Talk about the men of Saul. Thunder, lightning. The battle of Jericho, the battle of Jericho, Jericho, the battle of Jericho, and the wars came tumbling down. The battle of Jericho, Joshua, the battle, the battle of Jericho, right up to the walls of Jericho.
Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. And she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, These men are Jews and are throwing our city into the uproar by advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept, let alone to practice. And the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. And after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. And when he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. And about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. And then suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose.
The Jewish high priests and the elders of the Sanhedrin accused Jesus of blasphemy, arriving at the decision to put him to death. But first, they needed Rome to approve of their death sentence. So Jesus was taken to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor in Judea. Although Pilate found him innocent, unable to find or even contrive a reason to condemn Jesus, he feared the crowds, letting them decide Jesus' fate. Stirred by the Jewish chief priests, the crowds declared, crucify him. And as was common, Jesus was publicly scourged or beaten with a leather-longed whip before his crucifixion. Tiny pieces of iron and boned chips were tied to the ends of each leather thong, causing deep cuts and painful bruises. He was mocked, struck in the head with a staff, and spit on. A prickly crown of thorns was placed on his head, and he was stripped naked. Too weak to carry his cross, Simon of Cyrene was forced to carry it for him. He was led to Golgotha, where he would be crucified. As was the custom, before they nailed him to the cross, a mixture of vinegar, gall, and myrrh was offered. This drink was said to alleviate suffering, but Jesus refused to drink it. Stalk-like nails were driven through his, wrist, his wrists sorry, and ankles, fastening him to the cross where he was crucified between two convicted criminals. The inscription above his head tauntingly read, The King of the Jews. Jesus hung on the cross for his final agonizing breaths, a period that lasted about six hours. During that time, soldiers cast lots for Jesus' clothing, while people passed by shouting insults and scoffing. He cried out to his father, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that point, darkness covered the land. A little later, as Jesus gave up his spirit, an earthquake shook the ground, rippling the temple veil in two from top to bottom. Two. 
Here's a story of Gideon and the army of 3,000, 300 rather. Then Jerubal, also known as Gideon, got up early along with all of his soldiers. They encamped near the Herod Spring. The Midian encampment lay in the valley to their north near the hill of More. The Lord told Gideon, you have too many soldiers with you for me to drop Midian into their hands. Because Israel would become arrogant and say, it was my own abilities that delivered me. That's why you are to ask in full view of all the soldiers, whoever is afraid or is trembling may go back from Mount Gilead and return home. So 22,000 soldiers left and the 10,000 remained. Mercy. There are still too many soldiers, the Lord told Gideon. Bring them down to the water, and I'll refine them for you right there. Therefore, when I say to you, this one will be going with you, he will go with you. But no one may go about whom I tell you. This one won't be going with you. So he brought his soldiers down to the water, and the Lord told Gideon, You are to call out everyone who laps up water with his tongue like a dog from everyone who kneels to drink. The contingent of soldiers who lapped water with their hands to their mouths numbered 300 men. But everyone else kneeled to drink water. And the Lord told Gideon, I'm going to deliver you with the 300 soldiers who lapped by giving the Midianites into your control. Send everyone else back to their own homes. So the soldiers took provisions with them along with their trumpets and Gideon sent all the rest of the soldiers of Israel back to their own tents. But he retained the 300 men. And the Midian encampment was below him in the valley. Later that same night, the Lord directed Gideon, Get up and go down to the Midianite encampment, because I have given it into your control.
After the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the people of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call and they will gather his elect from the four winds from one end of the heavens to the other and i declare to you brothers and sisters that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep. And that's hope right there. We will not all sleep. We will not all sleep. But we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet will sound. The, the dead, dead will be raised, raised imperishable, and, and we will, will be changed. changed. Amen.
church is standing with me and we stand with the assurance that sooner will be done with the troubles of the world there are moments even as our students anticipate to the final exams that there are uncertainties in your hearts and your lives and you wonder now that you have come to this point in your experience, will God see you through? I want to assure you that sooner will be done with exams. Sooner will be done with confronting the business office in student finance. Sooner will be done with coming in contact with some lecturers that you would they were not what they are. But they are also coming that moment, moments in your life when you and I must face God head on, individually. And the assurance he gives today is that he still gives us song in the night season and all the day long. Could it be that there is somebody here this moment who is struggling? And God is whispering in your ears by the presence of the Holy Spirit saying, My son, 
my daughter. While I'm in charge of this vast universe, I'm still intimate and focused every day in relationships. I want to climb down and rule within your heart. You're here. You have listened to sweet soul story in songs of salvation. And what would it profit us if after listening, like the lady who went to church and after leaving church, somebody asked her the question, how was church today? And she said, church was good. She was asked a question, um, what did the preacher preach about? And she said, I don't remember what the preacher preached about, but church was good. And today, like that young man who went by the riverside, he thought quite well that he was going to use his basket to catch water. He went down once and then twice and then thrice. There was no water inside the basket. But he concluded that at the end, it came up clean. Jesus Christ is here to make your life clean, not to allow you to leave the way you came. And in this closing moments of today's service, as we close with prayer, he has you on his mind. He knows you by your name. And he wants you to leave here with that basket clean. He says, it does not matter what you have done or what you have become. Come. He bids you, come to Jesus. I'm going to pray, but the Spirit bids me to Ask the choir just to join me in singing, He touch me. Oh, He touch me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happens. And now I know Jesus touched me. And He makes me hold. Play the song. As someone comes, we're going to close in prayer. A little, a semitone lower, semitone lower. Shark could buy a heavy burden neath a load of guilt and a shame. Now I am no longer the same. Come, come, come. Jesus knows how to make the basket clean. He, he wants to do something in your life. Come, come as we close in prayer today. Come, come. Even if you have been walking with him because you have given your heart to him but you are struggling. All he bids you to do is come so that he will strengthen you to go the last mile of the road. Come. Happened and now I know he touched me and made since I met this blessed Savior. I met the blessed Savior since he cleansed and made me hold since he cleansed and made me hold I will never cease to praise him
time we sing the refrain of the song, they are coming. time would not allow her to get into the crowd but there she remembered that there is salvation in the name of Jesus she remembers that there is healing in the name of Jesus and while others were fastened psychologically and emotionally on their own pain and their problems her eyes were fastened on Jesus and she purposed in her heart that if I could just touch the aim of his garment immediately I would be restored to perfect health so while they were focused on their pain and their problems, she inched her way through the crowd and she went up and she held on to the hem of the garment of Jesus Christ and immediately Jesus cried out and said, somebody touch me. The disciples, they thought quite well that my Jesus was suffering from temporary insanity. And they said within themselves, how could it be that he is in this crowd and he could say that somebody touched his garment? When you and I come to Jesus, Hold on to him by faith. For his words declare, He who comes unto me by faith, I will in no wise cast out. When we come to him by faith, amidst how we are messed up and mangled by sin, when we come to Jesus by faith, we leave never the way we came for Jesus makes a difference and while we talk to you individually I'm talking to you corporately oh God that someone would leave here today never the way he came never the way she came because Jesus is in the house and where Jesus is, it makes a difference. Sin loses its power. When Jesus is in the house, all habits that have been formed over the years are broken. When Jesus is in the house, sickness becomes healable. Problems become solvable. Bills become payable. Mountains become Climbable rivers become crossable because Jesus in the is in the house. Oh God, stay not only in the house, but by your spirit, stay in our hearts. So that our focus and our eyes, our hearts every day will be fixed on that straight and narrow path that leads to life eternal. 
because sooner we'll be done with the troubles of this world. And every worshiper in this gymnatorium, every worshiper on our social media platforms, every worshiper who will listen to this recording later on must purpose in his heart, her heart, that I'm going home to be with God. So the work which you have started now, help us to leave here with the assurance that you will see to its completion anything and everything that we are going through we have placed them now into your capable hands and you are going to see us through until the end so do that for your name's glory and honor do that for the saving of soul do that for the building up of your kingdom may your kingdom come and your will be done as we leave this place with your presence and with your spirit speaking to us saying hey let go and let God let go and let God thank you for this musical feast thank you for the messengers that you have sent to us in songs and the messages Thank you for hearing our cry. Thank you for those who have responded to the call that they, they just need a little more strength, oh God. They need that little more will to surrender so that together we are leaving this worship hall as overcomers. Thank you for answering the sincere cry of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, let God's people rejoice in saying, Amen and Amen. Right where you are, please remain. The praise team will give you the final song. The final song is a, is a benedictory song. Yes, let the church say Amen. Yes, just remain where you are. to your seats thank you so much for having joined us in worship today those in this immediate gymnatorium and those who have joined us online surely the presence of the Lord has been in this place we invite you to join us at 3.30 for our very interactive Bible class. And Brother Thomas, our music coordinator, thanks to you and your team. And his eye contact tells me that his heart is reaching out to the singers and say, listen, 
pasta has crackers. There's a lot of lunch for potluck. You must stay back and let us have another feast in the afternoon. God bless you. We are so glad that you came. Have a wonderful afternoon. In Jesus. Yeah.